Uh, just what's the feeling as uh, you get in? Uh, very exciting, it seems like. Yeah, it's really exciting. I was uh, I was in this situation before, you know, first series, second series, you know. First series I was hurt, so I know what to expect. And uh, I played uh, the first game against Oilers, so I know the team a little bit. I know what to expect, so uh, yeah, it's exciting. I'm, I'm excited to be back and uh, hopefully help the team because it's a really important game. And Pete talked about fresh legs. Do you feel that when you come in after you've had a couple of days off? I think Delandria has done the same thing. It's, there's a lot of jump in the game. Uh, I feel good the whole season, you know. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah, I'm just fresh legs. Yeah. Uh, what is the impact of game? You have a chance to go up three-one. I expect them to. There's been a lot of talk over there just about how important this game is for them. So you're going to be you're facing a, a motivated team. Exactly. Yeah. I expect the best game uh, of the series from them. You know, it's a huge game. It's a big difference if you're winning 3-1 or 2-2. So uh, they play at home. They're strong at home. They have a good team. So uh, we have to have better start than we did last last games. And uh, yeah, it will be a big battle for sure. Do you like the road mentality you guys have? It seems like you're not worried about matching line. I mean, you can anyways, but it just seems like that whatever they do, you guys are ready, whoever's on the ice. Yeah, we feel comfortable, you know. Uh, we've been really good the uh, whole season uh, on, the, on the road. It's not just playoffs, it's uh, the whole regular season. So uh, we have lots of confidence on the road, and uh, we have to keep uh, sticking with the same game we're playing, and uh, we'll be good. As you guys keep having success on the road, is there anything that starts to stick out more about why that is? <laughs> we were talking about it actually, but uh, to be honest, we have no clue. But uh, hopefully, it, it will keep going like that. Yeah. Is it weird playing in this building since you guys were here before last time? I think there, you have 15 wins in this build, 15 playoff wins in this building. Uh, not really. It's actually lots of memories from the bubble, right? right. We've been here for over two months. Yeah. Too, so yeah. uh, when we came to the hotel a couple of days ago, so uh, it was lots of memories, and uh, hopefully it was the same ending. You know, go to the com uh, to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, will there be much talk about first periods uh, before this game after the last two? Uh, um, not as much first periods. It's just our pro having our process right from the right from the start. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter what period it is. You can't you know have one like we did the last two. Fortunately, Jake was awesome for us, and uh, we had, um, you know, I think we had a big penalty kill last game in the first, and, um, you know, come out of that down two. I mean, it could have been worse, but, you know, we know we can come back, and um, we, we, we did what we needed to do. It was probably our best two periods of the series in the second and third, and we, we know that uh, that's the level we've been trying to get to kind of the whole series, and hopefully we can uh, start that way tonight. What do you expect from them with a 2-1 potentially, you know? Well, they, came, a lot on the they, line. they came out hard last yeah. game. Um, I mean, a lot of the first period was them. I mean, yeah. you can't, they're trying to win too, right? It's not, it's not like we're, we, we, they, we took on water because we were, we were bad and they were whatever. They were really good. So we expect that right off the, right off the start, probably a 60 minute effort from them. They know, I mean, we all know what the difference is between 2-2 and 3-1. So, um, yeah, I mean, we want to have a good start and have a good full 60 minutes, and um, simple as that. We can't worry about what they're going to do. We just got to worry about ourselves. Matt, how much figuring out has happened by this point in the series? Um, I think there's still it's still going. I mean, I think you, I don't know if you really got each other figured out till kind of the end of the series. To be honest with you, um, there'll be you know moves and counter moves and stuff like that and uh, adjustments. And um, at the end of the day, though, you know. Both teams obviously have their what makes their what makes their their game great and what gives them an A game and the reason that we're both in this you know final four of this season. So um, yeah, I mean, like I said, we're focusing on our process and that's the most important thing. I know you focused on yourselves, but rare for there to maybe be three changes like on the other side. You know, maybe Perry's there and like they could be changing up a fair amount. Does that resonate at all for you guys? We haven't even thought about it to be honest. They have. They're like us. They're deep. Um, I don't think their depth gets enough credit, to be honest with you. I mean, they're they're big. They're two big boys up front. Get a, obviously majority of the press, which they should. I mean, they're two of the best players, you know, in the world. McDavid might be, you know, best player ever. You know, it's, it's, he's he's in that debate. So obviously those guys get uh, get those that get that uh, uh, attention. But their depth is really, you know, a little bit unheralded, and we it's something we respect. And doesn't matter who they're putting in or out. They're they're gonna have great players in and. And in the lineup, and um, you know, those those bottom that bottom six for them has been really good this series. As a center, what does Rope's return mean for you? Um, not a lot, to be honest. I mean, obviously depth for our team, but I mean, different when you're able to, when, all, or? 
or no, not really? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, uh, we had the matchups at home, and um, they have the matchups here, so it's not really up to us here. Uh, so. Uh, at home, maybe it might be a bit different, but uh, I know we saw a lot of uh, of uh, McDavid in the first two games, and uh, a lot, and when they put the two big guys together, we saw most of them. But I mean, here it's you know that's the great thing about our t our, our team is he doesn't you don't really have to line match because we have got guys that can play against anybody. Does that help? I mean, it's, it's, we've talked about it all year. It just seems like you worry about yourself as a team, not worry about what the other team's doing. Yeah, I mean, we got guys that we don't have. There's no one here that's like a, a weak link in terms of matchups, or you don't want to get out against certain guys offensively or defensively we got you know three three number one lines basically and uh you know our fourth line's not a fourth line it's like a third line and they were our best line in the in the first uh first period last game and uh generated some some havoc and um so uh we're just comfortable with our depth and we'll kind of just focus on ourselves and you know whatever matchups they want they'll get because they're the home team but um we'll do our thing Jake. how do you explain that Wild psychology swings in a game like that, where you guys can be under your nose for so long to start and then just blow it right back the other way. How does that happen in hockey? Well, we're a really even keel group. We know when we're not good, we know when we're good, and we never really. You know, we got it. Obviously, we got it. We gave ourselves a little kick in the ass after the first period, and we needed it. Um, but we know how to do that without. You know, Pete doesn't have to come in and break the news to us. I mean, we already know. Uh, we're a veteran group in here, and the young guys are mature guys, and they kind of, they they do a great job following and then leading their own way uh, after that. So, um, you know, it wasn't the start we wanted last game. But like I said, they had an unbelievable, they, they came out flying. I mean, sometimes you you just got to bend and not break. And uh, obviously we didn't we didn't break too much. Uh, we broke a little bit, but not enough to, you know, for the game to be out of reach and just reset and come back at it. That's what's made us good all year. It doesn't matter what the score is, what the situation, we're always in a game. Jake made a similar comment about McDavid that he might be the best player ever. What makes him different? I think just his skating. I mean, his uh, with with the puck. I mean, there's a lot of guys that can hum around out there without it, but just his ability to handle it and do what he does. His first couple steps are just unmatched. Um, and that's saying that's no disrespect to any of the other greats. I mean, I, it's going to be it's going to take a lot to knock Wayne off the pedestal of the best player ever. But you know, with Connor, the gap between Connor and kind of the next guy in this league is is pretty. It's 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 pretty wild. So um, he's just in a class of his own, and uh, we have that respect for him. And um, you have to. I mean, uh, but at the same time, the best way to to play those guys is to make them play defense. Uh, when they don't have the puck, they can't score on you. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of our, our mentality with the any great player we play against. We've talked with you about the journey. How much fun are you having right now? And what are the moments you're enjoying both in the game and in these in-between times? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. It's as much stress as fun. Um, the fun part is after a win. Uh, you know, the days in between. There's not much sleep happening for me right now. I think I just, I probably have to try and relax a bit more. But uh, it's, it, I just appreciate this opportunity so much, and I know what it means to so many people in here. And um, I think, uh, yeah, uh, sometimes you maybe crank up the intensity a little too much. And just gotta let it flow, and I think I found a better balance of that, you know, through the Colorado series and through this series. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been great. I mean, I'm I'm just feel very blessed to be part of this team with an opportunity like we have right now. Um, hi, Asa. I just want to ask you about the impact of having Rupe back in the lineup, and not just his play, but what it does for the entire team. It seems like it lifts everybody. Um. Yeah. Of course, he's or he has a huge impact in our team. Um, on and off the ice. Um, I'm not saying he's funny just because he's Finn, but I think guys would agree that around the locker room. So I think just brings positive energy. Front left, Mike. Hey, Chris. Uh, there was a discussion earlier in the series about the lack of penalties against your team. When you look at what you guys do, I think S has not had more than 20 in a season, 20 penalty minutes. I think you're probably under 30 most seasons. What is the key to playing good defense and keeping the penalty minutes low? Uh, just trying to be in good position, have a good stick when you can. Um, I think a lot of penalties happen when you're sort of you're out of position or you're chasing the play. So I mean, just trying to trying to be in a good spot, trying to help your your partner, trying to have five guys sort of connected in the right spot so you don't have to be reacting to, to something maybe that you don't expect is going to happen. Center right, Ryan. There's something about the risk of going down two games in a series. Teams tend to rally 
and push back. You guys have done it too. Maybe just a thought on what you might expect from the Oilers tonight, Chris, and how, I don't know if you can take the initiative in this game or not, but. Yeah, I mean, we expect their, their first period from, from last game. Um, again, they came out and, and sort of stormed us and we weren't, we weren't ready, we weren't fast enough, we weren't physical enough, we didn't win enough battles. So um, we need to take our mindset from the last 40 minutes and, and bring that into to the start of the game today and be ready for what we expect they're going to bring early. I mean, as you said, it's uh, we're up 2-1. They, they want to win, we want to win, and um, their building's loud. They're, they get a lot of... A lot of momentum from their fans, so um, we expect them to be be playing hard, be playing fast early. Fourth row on the left, Josh. I, I so you, you you and the core of this team spent a lot of time in this building, in this city, during, in the bubble. I'm just wondering what it was like then, and, and how did it bring the group closer together, those core guys on that run that you had? Um, yeah, kind of still brings the flashbacks when we come play here from the bubble. Um, I mean... It was a good run, obviously not, didn't go our way. And uh, just, I think it gave us good experience about long playoff runs and I'm sure it can help us this year too. Second row right, Eric. Chris, are you getting a chance to soak all this in? It's a very intense period of time, obviously going through these playoffs, but this is what you wanted to be a part of. Are you taking the time to kind of soak it up and enjoy it? Yeah, it's been it's been a, a really fun time. Um, meeting a lot of really good people like us here, and um, just uh, been been fun to be a part of the team. So um, obviously, you're preparing and, and trying to work as hard as you can um, for the games, but you're also trying to trying to enjoy yourself and, and have fun and, and take in the experience. Center left, Mark. Chris, you mentioned having a mindset of the last two periods, not the first. How do you explain how that happens? We see it all the time in hockey, where a team is just utterly dominant for a stretch and then just gets blown out of the building the next stretch. How does it waver that dramatically within a game? I mean, that's a good question. I think if, if we all knew, we would be able to do it for, uh, for 60 minutes. But, I mean, the, the game plan every... Every game is to, to play how we played our last 40 for, for 60. I mean, you're going to experience highs and lows throughout the game. Um, that's just how the game works. Unlucky bounces, penalties, goals, goals against. So, I mean, there's so many little things that can, a, a big hit, a, a big shot block, so many things can sort of swing little, swing momentum during a game. But, I mean, obviously we want to be sort of, you don't want to be up and down, up and down, trying to, trying to be on a pretty level path and, and, and play how we expect to play and, and how we want to play. Second row right, Andrew. As a Hawken has been missing for a while. How's this team and defensive core different without him available? Uh, of course, it affects when he's not out there. Um, he brings the physicality and big body what he has and plays really well. Um, but I think just that brings out our tap, depth in the team that when somebody goes out, the next man comes up and just does their job. And I think we've been rolling pretty well with the days who we have been playing. Um, Chris Knobloch's uh, promising some changes in the lineup. We won't say what they are. We see this a lot in the playoffs where coaches are coy about that. Does it, in general, not, not specifically today, but in general, does that affect your preparation in any way when you don't know exactly who's coming in on the other side, short of a goalie change? Uh, not, not really, no. No, I, I wouldn't, uh, I don't think it does. Uh, you know, at the same time, um, you know, uh, listen, it's an, it's an age-old practice, right? Um, you know, just... Uh, I guess the only thing is, you know, every coach is anal about preparation and, you know, you'd love to have exact lineups on the board when the players arrive at the rink and everyone knowing, you're, you know, not wiping names off the board and warm up, things like that. So, you know, but from a practical 
preparation point of view, it doesn't doesn't make a difference. Front left, Mark. You've coached right. a million big games before. Have you ever gone into one and made three healthy scratches in the same game? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I, I don't. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to look back at the the uh, the list, Mark. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Center right, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Pete. The Oiler power play through the year, when they go through little dry spells, they tend to, you know, there's adjustments. They're pretty good at making little tweaks. Is there any way for you guys to prepare for the idea that there'll, there'll probably be some adjustments yeah. and tweaks? And how do you prep for that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as you develop a book on the other team, I think, I think you try and anticipate what the tweaks might be based on uh, their the history and the, the tape um, over the entire year, right? You can see, you know, maybe what, what they've done when they've tweaked in the past, things like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're guessing. I think you want to stick to your foundation and, and the things, the two or three things that they do really well. And, um, you know, and then, you know, if they, if they throw some tweaks in there, then you adjust on the fly. But, you know, there, there is some... Uh, work at, at trying to anticipate what they might look to do next. Front left, Mike. Hey, Pete. Hey, Mike. Any lineup changes you'd like to share? Uh, facts in Smith out. And then any changes in the first periods of the last two games that you've looked at, seen on film, that, you know, anything in particular you would like to do differently? Um, yeah, start, start on time. You know, I think that's probably the, the obvious one. Start on time. Second row left, Eric. Hey, Pete. Um, I just want to ask about the impact of Rupe Hintz, getting him back in the lineup. Obviously, obviously he's a great player, but it seemed to affect everyone else around him. I guess how big is, is having him and healthy Rupe in, in the lineup for you guys? Yeah, I, it's not surprising. And, and, you know, I think probably the more surprising thing is, is how well we played against the teams we played and the record we had when he was out of the lineup. You know, if you, you take anyone's number one center out of their lineup this time of year, uh, when you're down to the final eight, final four teams, um, you know, it, it affects all kinds of parts of your game. So, you know, I, I, I loved how we weathered that storm, um, you know, while he was out of the lineup. And obviously, you know, him coming back in changes things for us. Second row right, Andrew. Hi, Pete. Uh, facts, uh Flip-flapped a, a few times over this series, the yeah. last series. Just wondering your thoughts on what brings him back in today and how yeah. hard it might be for him to go back and forth. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it, it probably goes a little bit back to Mark's question, but, you know, when you have depth and you get to this point of the year, you know, Edmonton's coming off a seven-game series and we're now into game four of, of this one, you know, playing every other day. We're coming off two really tough series. You know, I think that's the reason you have depth is to, to put in fresh legs uh, at different points, depending. So, um, you know, for us, I'm sure people are going, you've won two games in a row, why are you changing your lineup? You know, so, sometimes it's just the practicality of, of fresh legs and, and using your depth and keeping everybody involved. Fourth row on the left, Mike. Pete, obviously you're concentrating on this series. We all know you go back with Paul Maurice a long time. Is there anything in his press conferences that he says that surprises <laughs> you anymore? No, no, not really. I mean, uh, he's, uh, well, I, you know, I, I think he's the best in the business uh, at that and, and has been for a long time. I think he's, he's grown more comfortable um, you know, in the later stages of his of his coaching career in in that environment, and he's enjoying the ride. You know, I, I remember sitting and having a beer with him, probably early early when he took the Florida job. You know, and and he said he was going to make a conscious effort to try and enjoy it because it, it it's not an easy job to enjoy when you're in in the fight, and you can tell he's enjoying it. 